Hey guys, welcome back to Destiny. Kaze here with yet another video. I think I'm going to start doing some weapon review of videos. So I figured since the first curse just became available to people today, I would go ahead and give you guys a bit of a review and my thoughts on the weapon so far, having played around with it for a bit. Now we'll go into uh, use cases and PvE and PvP and all that stuff in a little bit. But first, let's talk about what the weapon is and how it stacks up. So as far as the stats are concerned, it actually does come out at 290. When you get it from the quest, I bumped it up to 294 with a quick blue I had lying around. I may not get this up to 310, but we'll get to that later on. You'll notice immediately that the impact is extremely high. Uh, this thing actually does more damage than Hawk Moon, the year two version anyway, if you get a precision hit. The precision hits deal 95 um, if you leave on CQB ballistics. Uh, I opted for soft ballistics because the range on this thing is atrocious, even for a hand cannon, and we'll address that later. You could also opt for smooth ballistics to keep the range and uh, actually get a little more range, but the stability is also garbage. And while stability is typically not an issue for hand cannons, uh, the low stability on this makes it very hard to hit follow-up shots. Now, while that's not usually an issue you only have an eight round magazine which is significantly lower than say the hawk moon and uh the bonus to it is relevant to aiming but also to getting precision kills so follow-up shots are very important you cannot two shot with this weapon so it's important that you hit consecutively um, one strategy could be to two to the body one to the head um, and that will put somebody down give you the first curse buff but let's go down the list so first of all, we have Deadeye, grants a bonus to range, stability, and movement speed while aiming down the sights. Now I will say that these effects are subtle at best. Um, I haven't really noticed too much of an increase in my movement speed while using this, um, especially while aiming down the sight. So, it, I mean, I guess it's there, but even placebo effect isn't really kicking in. Like I, I'm not really even telling myself that it's there. It just doesn't really feel like it's there. So it's subtle of anything, maybe 10% maybe 20% um, effect, but it is what it is. Like I said, I did opt for soft ballistics because I didn't want to give up that much of my stability. Um, I don't mind taking the very minor hit to impact. It goes from 95 to 93 on a headshot. Um, the range, because of the low range, the drop-off is actually pretty dramatic. At, at ranges that would be uh, perfectly fine for your average pulse rifle, you're already going to see your headshots dropping to 89, 88 damage. So that's a big issue. You do have triple tap. Now this is largely useless in PvP because it's pretty hard to land that consecutively uh, in PvP, but if you get it, hey, you get an extra shot. So there's that. Um, I opted for lightweight because with a hand cannon, I, I think mobility is a bit more important. You can also opt for quick draw, but here's another choice too, speed reload. So you'll notice that the reload speed on this is pretty low and I'll show some footage later, but it is pretty bad. Uh, the reload speed on this gun. So we'll we'll get into that in a minute. Um, you could go for a speed reload, but even then it's still not that good, even with this thing. So I opted for lightweight. Uh, and lastly, we have the first curse. Now this one is if you get a precision kill, you have about eight to 10 seconds. I didn't really time it, but it's around that time period where you have a buff called the first curse. And that buff will actually increase your range and stability. It did feel a little bit easier to shoot the gun uh, when I tried doing that. But, you know, it doesn't really opt for more damage. It'll just make follow-up shots on multiple targets a bit easier. So let's go into some philosophy of use and how you would want to use this. And we'll start out with some PvE. All right, so one of the uses you may have for a weapon is, say, farming in PvE. So one of my spots for Glimmer is obviously uh, the Dark Beyond mission here. Now, it is pretty easy to headshot these guys, and this is where the gun does actually kind of shine. Uh, surprisingly, unlike its sister, this gun is a bit more aimed at PvE. Um, a lot of the benefits, such as triple tap and uh, the first curse, will really benefit repeated headshots. For starters, you get a lot of ammo back using triple tap. It is pretty easy to headshot in this case, as you can see. I just really am just flooring these guys without much of a problem. Um, I am missing here and there, and, you know, usually I've been doing better, but... It is what it is. Um, but yeah, all of these guys are dying in one hit. The triple tap effect does really uh, does really shine. It doesn't feel like I'm reloading too much, which is good. Um, so definitely good for dealing with a lot of little guys here. All right, so right now I'm here in the Valistoric Strike. 
uh, going ahead and trying this thing. This is in the 36 playlist. I figured to just get something done and, and burn some three coins. Figure, why not? Let's go ahead and try this in strikes. Now, one thing I will say is uh, this thing sucks as far as trying to line up shots. It takes a while. It takes a patient hand uh, for sure. It is not something you can go out like. It's not like a pulse rifle or an auto rifle where you can just keep firing. Uh, in order to get the benefit, you do need to line up your headshots. Um, I mean, 36s are going down pretty quick, but hey, they're 36s, so that's, you know, subjective at best. I mean, if that's what you're looking for. Um, I'm really not liking this gun much for PvP. Uh, the problem is that it's really slow to line up a shot, and you're heavily punished if you don't. The rate of fire is kind of slow. And furthermore, you can see the range here is really not very good. It's hard for me to hit anything. The accuracy is low for what this gun is intended for. So really the, the places where the gun will shine is going to be when you, when you have a chance to line up a shot um, and you really don't have that opportunity in PVP. One of the things I don't like about the gun is I like the ability personally, I like the ability to be able to switch between a shotgun or a sniper, depending on the map. So this is widow's court, for example. Um, on this map, I tend to prefer to snipe because there's a lot of straightaways, there's a lot of areas where it'd be very easy for me to snipe somebody who's far away. Um, and I basically have to run shotgun with this because I don't have a close range option. Despite the fact that hand, gun, uh, hand cannons have largely been changed to be closer range options, especially when you consider things like the last word, uh, the sister to this gun. Um, it's, it's really, it's kind of a paradox. So you, you're stuck with a gun that works better at long range, but, or is intended to work at long range, but works better at short range. So you're stuck with something that's kind of in between the two. See there, I didn't even have time to line up the third shot and he'd already killed me with a Soros, which I mean, it's not a terrible gun, but really it's not even that good of a gun. So, and even that was at close range. I mean, you were sitting, you were seeing a 93 on the headshots. There, for example, there would have been no way for me to hit that person um, at that range. The The falloff is just too much. It's just too much on this gun. So this gun, really not favorable for PvP. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the summary, the overall how I feel about this gun, given the footage I just showed you guys and, and all that stuff. Give it up front ratings. I would say PvE, maybe a 6 or a 7 out of 10. We'll call it a 7. Uh, PvP, maybe a 4. Maybe a five, maybe like a, we'll call it a 4.5. It's, it's not good for PVP. Um, if you're going to run that slow hand cannon type, I would, I would vastly prefer Hawkmoon. Hawkmoon is, is just better. You have more ammo. You have the chance for bonus damage. Um, the, the reload speed is better. The, um, the rate of fire is better. The damage is comparable. I mean, for what it is, you, I mean, you would get a 90 on headshot with Hawkmoon. But two of those in a body or two bodies in a head will kill somebody with a hawk moon. Even ignoring the fact that you can two shot with a hawk moon, like pretending that doesn't exist, um, you do a comparable. It would take the same number of shots. Um, the little tiny bit of extra damage you get on a precision or a body shot with this gun is not worth uh, the compromise of the slow reload speed, uh, the horrible stability, the horrible range. Um, the low magazine size, all that stuff. So again, I, if you're going to go with this archetype, I would I would rather use a Hawkmoon for basically anything. I mean, that includes uh, PVE as well. Um, if, like I said, the only the only real use for this gun that I've found is is killing a lot of little guys. But even then, there are guns out there that are better that are also exotic. I mean, if you got a bad Juju, for example, or if you got the new um, No Time to Explain, which just came out uh, yesterday. If you got those guns, I would say they would they would better serve that purpose because they actually put a lot of ammo back in the magazine, especially no time to explain if you're lining up a lot of precision shots, which you have to do with this gun to really benefit from it anyway. Um, that's really where this gun shines. I, I think the problem is that the buffs, the first curse and the dead eye buffs are simply not enough to warrant this gun. Um, it doesn't it doesn't outclass either of those weapons. I mean, it's got a worse range than bad juju, doesn't have as much ammo return, doesn't have as big of a magazine. Uh, DPS is going to be lower. The stability is a lot worse, and that's just against a bad juju. Um, so yeah. To answer the question, is it worth? No. 
I would say not. I would say you got a lot of other options out there. But hey, if you're a collector, go ahead and get it, I guess. Maybe they'll maybe they'll buff it. You never know. I mean, like, I try to collect all the exotics just because you never know. I mean, for the longest time, everybody thought Soros was crap. And I know I said earlier that it's like not that good of a gun, but it actually is pretty decent for, for PvP if you want to run. Especially if you want to run an auto rifle, it's about as good as you're going to get for an auto rifle. Um, but yeah, so that's going to do it. Guys, I hope this video has been informative to you. I hope it's helped you to make up your mind or found out any kind of information you have. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you like this video or a dislike if you didn't. And uh, please go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more content. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a good day.